So a little bit of theory. Ultrasound and sound are mechanical waves. So just as sound moves through the air, but not through a vacuum, uh, so does ultrasound. Um, light and heat are electromagnetic waves. So, you know, very different. Um, sound travels in a straight line unless it hits something and reflects. But, you know, that's one of that, the characteristic of being directional can be very helpful. You can be in a plant and you can use your uh, device to search for leaks and other sounds. And um, because it's traveling in that straight line, you can more easily identify where the problem exists. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, the sound wave travels through a medium, you know, a gas, a liquid, and a solid. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Not through vacuums. You may never have to deal with a vacuum, but that's why when you scream in space, no one can hear you unless you've got the intercom turned on. Um, okay, so, you know, sound can be transmitted through certain materials and um, it can pass through, it can be refracted and so on. Um, we can see, you know, reflections occur where the sound bounces off a surface which is something to be aware of because you might be listening and or you know monitoring a certain point but the sound is actually coming from somewhere else it can affect the measurements you're taking and you know we can get into a lot more detail about that i don't think i bother about that but um now i've used this word ultrasound in case you're not familiar what ultra means in ultrasound is that it is beyond our normal range of hearing. So technically speaking, we can hear from around um, 20 hertz or thereabouts um, up to around 20,000 hertz. Now, us older people, you know, I'm older, and if you've been around a lot of machinery, you might not be able to hear beyond about 15 kilohertz or 16 kilohertz. It doesn't matter. What we're usually monitoring is something that's much higher in frequency. You know, bats use it and dolphins use it, um, but uh, uh, it's nothing that we can ever hear. That doesn't mean to say that some of the failure modes we're talking about would not be audible the trouble is you've got all the machinery and whatever else is happening in the plant and you may not be able to hear it because of all that sound. The beauty of ultrasound is we can focus on those higher frequencies and detect it quite clearly. Now, I'll explain how we hear something that's above our range of hearing in just a moment. But there's ultrasound, there's our audible range and infrasound and you know, elephants and whales is that infra just means below our range of hearing up to around 20 hertz um, and probably a bit higher than that so yep the sound will just travel along but it will dissipate over time the energy is lost and of course it can fade away as it hits different uh, objects and barriers and 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 so on um, sound is actually produced by a wave motion in the molecules themselves, the molecules of the air, of water, of uh, the solids. Um, it causes the air to vibrate, if you like, and in a moment I'll, I'll show you what that actually looks like. Um, but yes, it's, it's traveling through the molecules as they travel along. Now, the interesting part, perhaps, or the difference with how you might normally visualize waves if you've had anything to do with vibration analysis, and I apologize if this animation is coming out a little slowly. When you record these sessions, all the load on the computer and the internet and everything makes things slow down a little and might even make things appear less smooth than they do in reality, like if you're in a classroom or something. But in any case, if you think of this as a tuning fork, you know, you hit it and it makes a certain sound. Those tines, those two vertical things there, go wiggling back and forward. And imagine that they are sort of pushing the air away, creating refract, uh, compression, sorry. And then as they vibrate back, it's the opposite and it's called rarefaction. 
So you can see it there and you know think of it like a sine wave. In fact, I can superimpose them over the top. So this is, in this case, a single pure frequency. You can see it there. And you know that compression and rarefaction is is what comes to our ear, for example, and makes our eardrum vibrate, and that's how we can hear it. Of course, the sensor inside the ultrasound device can detect that.